With the reconfiguration of the bimodal voter accreditation system machines used for the 25th February presidential and national assembly elections concluded what lies ahead for voters in the March 18 state elections. Nigeria's inflation rate has risen to 21.91% in February 2023, according to the National Bureau of Statistics. We'll look at what this means for a nation already grappling with severe economic hardship. And in Of The Press, we take a look at the latest headlines on front pages of today's National Dailies with Analysis to follow. Very good morning. You're welcome to the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful Thursday morning. My name is Kofi Bartels, and of course, we apologize for starting a bit behind time due to technical uh, difficulties beyond our control, but we're here and uh, very, very set to do justice to the issues of the day. We have interesting conversations. Of course, we're counting down to the 2023 March 18 uh, governorship and state house of assembly elections, and uh, we will be bringing you coverage right here on Plus TV Africa. We have a guest standing by to do justice to the topics uh, uh, ahead. Let's start off with uh, a look at what is being, has gotten Nigerians chatting and talking on the social space. We're talking about a top trending segment uh, is what we'll start with. And the first one is not a, a story I really or ordinarily would like to talk about or touch on because uh, it's so close by, just uh, not far from where we are. But the uh, traditional ruler of Ikate Legushi Kingdom, he is uh, His Royal Majesty Oba Sahid Ademola uh, Kusenla III. Uh, he has declared a three-day oral right on non-indigents and women from midnight uh, to 5.30 a.m., including on uh, Saturday's governorship and state assembly election day uh, um, you know that is a um it is is a, a ritual or a rite that is performed you know usually by everyone uh in the yoruba land in parts of yoruba land well we hear that there was a memo that was issued or sent to residents of ikate legushi uh in which the monarch announced that the or is alleged let's say is alleged uh, to have announced that there will be restriction of movement to perform the oral rite in the community from Wednesday to Saturday. Residents of the community are also alleging, or some residents, let's say, are also alleging that there is um, a political motive for the curfew, which will further disenfranchise women and non-indigents from voting on the election day. Others have complained that it would be, uh, they will be paralyzed, or it will paralyze commercial activities uh, in the community. All right, then the, the, the press reached out to uh, Tamitope Oyefesho. Uh, Tamitope Oyefesho is the uh, special assistant on media affairs uh, to the monarch of Ikate Kingdom. Uh, he is reported to have confirmed that an oral rite is taking place or happening in Ikate Legushi Kingdom. Uh, which is a, a very, very important part of Etiosa in Lagos. Okay, Etiosa, local government area in Lagos. It's a very important part of, of, of Etiosa in Lagos. So this is what he is quoted as saying. Uh, yes, there is an oral right happening in the kingdom. So the Legushi Community Council decided that residents and visitors should be in their houses from midnight uh, to the morning uh, or midnight to morning, Wednesday to Saturday. Wednesday to Saturday um, is what he is saying. Uh, Wednesday to Saturday. However, he is said to be, have debunked the allegation that it will affect activities on election day. He says, quote, saying, quote, we are not saying that people should sit at home during election day like they have in other places. Uh, elections are held during the day, and by morning we'll open the roads for people to come. It is a traditional right, but unfortunately it has come at this time. It is an annual event. Uh, this is not the first time 
we are not disrupting any process. All right. So, uh, uh, you know, he also said, quote, voting starts at 8 a.m. Uh, there is a police curfew from midnight on election day. We are not doing anything different from what the police have done. It was just commenced two days earlier. The people should stop speculating uh, or being mischievous about our rights. It's not interfering with the process. Residents can move about from morning till 11.30 p.m morning till 11 30 p.m um so that's that uh of course the police public relations officer in legal state was uh, reached and um he says he won't engage in hearsay um uh, he won't enga engage in speculation of course that's what he he said so uh you know before this news became public or this allegation became public there were uh, some some rumors that something like this was going to happen in some parts of Lagos, and there was a particular community where uh, the residents had to reach out to the commissioner of police to say, "Look at what's going on. They're saying we can't come out, you know, uh, in this election period." Um, I mean, what what the media aid to the the monarch in in Ikatelegushi has said, I think, should give us more insight, or is quoted as saying. Uh, should give us more insight into what exactly is, is at play here. Um, because they're saying that they're starting on Wednesday, Wednesday, uh, and it is going to continue till Saturday morning. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, okay, is what he's quoted as saying. Um, and if indeed it is true, if indeed it is true, it would therefore mean that uh, the, uh, what do you call it, the, I mean, voters will be allowed to go around, move about on Saturday, um, especially going by the fact that the allegation uh, says that the movement restriction will start from 11.30 p.m. till morning. Um, however, what we, we hear, um, uh, another latest, is that the OBA has come out uh, to debunk this, this allegation or to debunk this particular um, uh, insinuation, but it's something that we'll have to we'll have to clarify, you know. Because uh, yesterday I saw in the Punch newspaper uh, that um, Oba Sahid Ademola himself on Wednesday, yesterday, said that uh, the 2023 oral festival will not affect the governorship elections. You know, that's what he's saying um, through his media aide, Temi Topo Yefesha, as we mentioned earlier. Um, so, what is the debunking? I'm not too sure about that. But what they're saying is that the election day is not included. You know, the election day is not included. And moreover, they are going to um, restrict the movement of people from uh, maybe 11.30 p.m. or midnight to 5 a.m. where they will perform the rites. You know, so the election day is not included. And moreover, he says on, fr on the Friday before the election day, there's a curfew usually you know put in place by the police you know so they're not doing anything different so some have said okay it's a modern society why are people going to be restricted for traditional rights and all that but they are doing their thing in the night you know i can't remember as the city i lived in where when there's a particular cult if they want to move around at night um you know you have to turn off your light turn off the generating set everybody stay at home and if they see any light on security light, they'll smash it. <laughs> it'll catch you on the road. <laughs> At that time, you are on your own with a masquerade. So um, it's, it's, I think what we can say is that we right here, you know, at Plus TV Africa, we have a high regard for, for the traditional institutions. And I'm sure that Nigerians out there and the voting public will have a high regard for the traditional institutions. I mean, uh, Oba Legushi is a very, very respected monarch. That's talking about Oba uh, Sahida Demola, um, the traditional of the Legushi Kingdom in Lagos, a very respected monarch uh, and um, very revered monarch at that. And uh, I mean, traditional rights, uh, traditional um, uh, uh, you know processes and all that are really um, you know the exclusive preserve of the custodians of the land. They uh, have a right to do that. Um, the, re the the question some would ask is, uh, you know. Why now? But what the Oba's media assistant is saying is that it just happens that it's an annual exercise. It just happens that it's coinciding. It's a coincidence.
coinciding with the run-up to the election period, but that they've moved it some days before the election, and that from in the daytime people are allowed to go about their activities, but from 11:30 uh, p.m. or midnight to 5 a.m. you can't do that. So those who want to go clubbing, <laughs> you have to think about maybe staying in a hotel or something, you know. Um, so I think that's that. It's nothing, you know. Just stay at home or stay somewhere else. Allow the traditional institution to do the thing. And on election day, people are free to move. People are free to move. It ends on Friday. So there's nothing to be worried about. All right, we'll move on to another top trending story. Uh, a total of 21 suspected internet fraudsters, um, we call them Yahoo Boys. In, I, don't, I don't think we should even call them Yahoo Boys anymore. I think it should be Yahoo Boys and Girls, you know, in, in, the, in the name of uh, gender equality. Uh, I spoke to uh, a, t a taxi driver or a cab driver uh, from one of these ride hailing apps, you know, and uh, he was complaining to me that uh, people would show him in the midst of the, the um, cash crunch in Nigeria and uh, search in use of um, banks, online platform, internet platforms and mobile applications. So the banks are finding it difficult to cope with the search. Um, so sometimes, from time to time, they will complain to you that they have, um, you know, people are not paying them or, you know, love. But what I hear now is a trend is that uh, some of these um, uh, uh, fraudsters or passengers who want to dupe the drivers, uh, ride-hailing drivers, would show them fake, fake um, transaction notices or alerts or receipts. You know, and uh, one driver was trying to convince me that um, uh, that uh, his female drivers or, or passengers are the ones that do it more, you know, which was a shock to me. Um, so maybe we need to just call it what it is. It's no more Yahoo boys, but Yahoo boys and girls. Really, that's the situation. But um, for this one, all I can see, those I can see in front of me, are boys, young guys, you know, 21 of them, suspected internet fraudsters. Of course, they'll be charged to court. If they are found guilty, then we can call them internet fraudsters. And I'm happy that the, well, you know, the, the media is choosing not to show their face, but it's showing them from behind, which is good, which is good, we, you know, so that they can be given their day in court. Um, the EFCC, Nigeria's Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, is a, is a um, the corruption watchdog, um, arrested them. And uh, the names have been put out. I don't know why the names are put out since they're still suspects, you know. Um, but the Antigraft agency in a statement on its official Twitter page said the suspects were arrested in Lugbe and Kubwa suburbs of Abuja. Um, the arrest followed uh, what they call actionable intelligence on their alleged internet-related fraud activities. You know, they said they recovered some items from them. When they say we recovered items, I don't know, are those items stolen? Because you hear them saying we recovered uh, um, two mobile phones, recovered three laptops, uh, recovered two iPhones and all that. If you go see someone, you know, arrest somebody who is a suspect and they have their property, do you call that recovering? You know, but uh, I'm sure the security uh, operatives and police and the FCC will know best the uh, language to use since it's their profession. But to me, as a layman in that area, I sometimes wonder why they say they recovered. You know, maybe you come, you raid the house of a uh, a suspect and their mobile phones and then they parade the mobile phones so we recovered five mobile phones from them I mean <laughs> I didn't know meant to have mobile phones but anyway maybe the laptops are um, part of the exhibits I don't know but it's, it's, it's somehow awkward to me they said they recovered three laptops uh, Mercedes CLA 250 uh, which is a, a choice car of uh, Yahoo boys but it doesn't mean these are Yahoo boys. We don't know yet. 25 high-end mobile phones and a C300 car. Uh, the FCC is saying they'll be arraigned in court as soon as the investigations are conc concluded. And you know, this is my problem. It's a problem I have. Why are you sounding like these guys are, have already been convicted when you are, you are just about to start the investigation? You know, somebody tipped you off. You went and raided their home. You arrested them. And you're putting their names out in public... You know, which, I mean, you, know, you never can tell what the effect of this will be. Uh, there's a case somewhere in, I think, in the United States or in Britain uh, of a celebrity who was accused of uh, sexually harassing a, a woman. Um, well, he went to court and then he was cleared of all these charges. And I was interviewed. This was uh, earlier this week. 
I was asked, you know, for his thoughts, and he said um, it's going to be hard for him to, to repair the damage to his, his reputation since his name has been put out, up, out there already. You know, it's going to be hard for him. So, um, I mean, if, for me, it's not about discouraging uh, anti-graft agencies, but um, we, we talk about media trial, you know. Like I said, first of all, it's good that their faces weren't shown. Secondly, I think their names should not have been put out, you know. Do your job. Do your investigation. That's why you're paid. And then go to court. And when they are convicted, you can announce that, hey, these people have been convicted and found guilty and all that. You know, even the practice of a mug shot, you know, being released to the public by AFCC, I do not know um, how, how do I call it? I do not know how, uh, uh, whether that is known to Nigerian law, that, you know, you arrest a suspect. Oh, uh, Kofi Bartels, he's a... Uh, what do they call it? Um, we have information on him or he financial crimes or something, something. Then they come swoop on. Maybe it's a mistaken identity. It has happened to me before, you know. Uh, and they put my name on the document, mistaken identity. And, and uh, they swoop on you. And then you're like, what's going on? And then they take you to their facility and they take a picture of you and put it on social media. Uh, uh, OAP. On a personality broadcaster, uh, caught or arrested for for internet fraud, investigations are about to start. However, and if I, if I walk out walk free, who is going to pay, repair the damage to my reputation? If it were me, I would definitely call my lawyer, and I would say to my lawyer, "Please, can you file a suit?" And they will pay huge money. So, so I think this agency should. I mean, Yahoo boys, we're used to this thing. We commend them for the work they are doing, but they should conclude their investigation before putting such out. And then also they should tell some of the operatives to also, um, if they find the, these guys doing these things, not co collect money from them, you know, do the job. Because from what some of these old boys are, have alleged, they're saying that, you know, they, they'll be roughed up, you know, by some security men, not AFCC, but it could be some other agency. I don't know. Maybe. And they'll be roughed up, taken in, you know, and all these things will be done only for them to be, to be, uh, for money to be collected from them, like sort of a bribe, and they'll be set free. You know, they'll be set free. So it's good the FCC are saying that they're going to go to court with this, but they need to talk to some of the operatives, the FCC police, whichever it is, to not do what they've been doing before, which is rough some of these boys up and collect money and all that. Okay. Let's go to River State. Um, uh, my production people seem to be so interested in this story, so I won't waste time. Uh, so this is, uh, these are pictures of women protesting the uh, election results in River State. You just see them in a matter of seconds. Um, these uh, women, yesterday, Wednesday, February 25, you can see that on your screen, uh, found their way to the Independent National Electoral Commission office on Aba Road, near Water Lines, <laughs> that's what they call it, in Port Harcourt River State. And you can see some, they are wearing all black, and you can see the placards they are holding, INEC, we are watching you, INEC River State, uh, River State is not for sale, Yakub Mahmoud, Mahmoud Yakubu, yeah, Wikis, what, I can't see that one, INEC stopped killing, uh, River State later votes count, excuses from INEC, you know, and all that. Uh, so. Like you've seen on your screen, they were all black. You know, carrying placards, some of them reading, uh, I think we are watching you, I think do the right thing for once, you know, amongst others. And uh, uh, we don't know who these women are, but I think this follows some of the incidents uh, during the presidential election in River State, which basically amounted to, uh, to, to daylight robbery. And I mean, if the election in River State stands, then of course, you know that uh, nothing has changed as far as democracy in Nigeria is concerned. And you know what the politicians will do? They will say, well, let's just do it first. Let's rig, rig the election first, and then let's go to court, and then we'll take it from there. Okay? Um, and that's what's been happening. And that's what's been happening. And um, it'll be quite unfortunate if it, if it continues you know, in 2023. Of course, there are different elections. You know, if you look at the House of Representatives elections, the governorship elections and the state, the Senate elections, there are different dynamics involved. And then um, the, the candidates, some of them have their base, you know, they have their structure, they have supporters. 
Uh, but but some people f strongly feel that the presidential election results in Port Harcourt were, were rigged. And the evidence is, is so loud, especially in one or two local government areas. From the reports that our correspondent gave to us at the time, the evidence is so loud. And um, uh, I mean, we, we can confidently conclude that there was daylight robbery, daylight, broad daylight robbery uh, of election results in, in River State. You know, anyone who will say that didn't happen or we shouldn't say that means that we should actually report what happened and then come on and lie that it didn't happen, which personally I can't do. You know, I, I can't do that. Um, so, so, but I don't know if this will amount to anything because, um, I mean, in 2015, you know, in River State, people came out to shout and protest and they said, let's go to court. And um, the rest is history, you know. So the dramatist person there, you know, <laughs> maybe, you know, sitting down and drinking their champagne and just saying, look at them, nothing will come out of this. You know, so I wish them the best in Port Harcourt. I hope that um, they get justice. But, I mean, for these women, I wonder who is uh, playing the drums for the, or the tune for the <laughs> dance they are dancing. I mean, it could be that um, some of the candidates on, on, on Saturday's election or in Saturday's like, governorship election may want to use this as a way of putting pressure on INEC so that there will be no rigging. Now, can you blame them? You know, if for one thing, a free and fair election, if a politician sponsors something like this, you can see the placards look really new and fresh. Can you blame them? Because, I mean, any politician who sponsors something like this will want to have a free and fair election. And all they're asking for is a free and fair election, an election that is not rigged, an election where, uh, you know, when the voting is done, the results that were recorded in the polling unit will be what will be written on the result sheet. And when it's taken by the presiding officer to the RA or Ward Coalition Center, as recommended by INEC, um, that they won't change the results. And when the word results are gathered and taken to the local government area, um, a, a free and fair election means that the presiding or the coalition officer in the local government will not disappear for three days. It will not be in either government house or be in local government headquarters, you know, rewriting the results. Uh, a free and fair election means that the local government coalition officer, uh, whose result is meant to be submitted at the state coalition uh, center, which is just in his same city, will not get there three days after, while those who were bringing results from local governments that you have to cross water to get to some parts, got there before him. A free and fair election will mean that, that the, the, the local government coalition officers in, in River State will not disappear for three days and appear in company of security, heavy security, all right, heavy security, um, uh, which was not given to him by anybody from INEC, security men unknown to INEC. In, in tinted, you know, glass vehicles, you know, uh, uh, suspected to be that from government house, okay? A free and fair election will mean that uh, a local government coalition officer in River State would not be held down by a local government chairman who has been threatened by the governor to produce results. Otherwise, he will be dealt with. It means that she won't have to call the commissioner of police, okay, to come and rescue her from a local government chairman who is pressuring her to change the result and who has abducted her. It will mean that local government chairman who is not accredited to be in the INEC State Coalition Center will not follow her there in a bit to try and convince her and everybody there frantically, okay, shaking and sweating to change the results to what he wants it to be. That is what we mean by free and fair election. It is what the people vote is what will be seen. A free and fair election in River State means that what we see on the results sheets stamped and signed and given to the party uh, polling unit agents, okay? Those is also not be different from what will be announced uh, by the local government coalition officer. That the results will not be different from, as announced, not be different from what INEC itself is uploading on its IRF portal. A free and fair election in reverse cities will mean that the, when the party agents follow the presiding officer to the area or ward coalition center, and from there to local government coalition center, that thugs and hoodlums, which is their right, it's in the in electoral act, thugs and hoodlums will not appear from nowhere and chase them away and abduct the INEC coalition officers to an unknown destination. A free and fair election in River City and by extension Nigeria will mean that the Beavers device will not cease working all of a sudden, or the INEC officials will not complain that they can't upload the results and then go away with them to unknown destinations. That's what these women are protesting for. That's what they're protesting for, you know. We're not fools. Nigerians are not fools. And we see what's happening. 
And we in the media, we have a responsibility as an insurance in the Nigerian constitution to hold government to account. And when we see blue, we call it blue, no matter who is involved. When we see red, we call it red, no matter who is involved. Okay? The world is watching. And in politics, as it is in life, whatever a man sows, a woman sows, you know, that, that is what they shall reap. And they who live by the sword will die by the sword, figuratively. That's the size of our package on our, our top trending segment. We'll be right back to look at what the papers say.